All right, man. Let's go ahead and introduce them one by one. Let me start. Starting let me start. Enough. No, no, no. Let me let me start with somebody that I actually care about. Somebody near and dear to my heart. Let's bring up OG, man. Let's bring up Chill. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, can, we, can we get Chill on it? Yeah, can we get Chill? Yeah. yeah. Big, Big Chill. Chill. Ah, how you doing today, man? Hey, man. <clears throat> you excited? Ready? I'm trying to be cool, but I'm ready to Hell fight. yeah. Hell I'm yeah. Ready, I'm, I'm ready to fight. That's all I got to say. I'm ready, I'm ready, to, ready, feel to, it, I'm ready to fight. Okay. Let's, let's get it on. I got the next person coming up. I, some say we look alike. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they also say I look like B Souls. We got Big Mars in the building. Big Mars. <laughs> Mars Blackman go. in the house. Oh, the yeah. biggest. Oh, yeah. Mars Blackman in the house. Skinny B Souls. <laughs> Skinny B Souls. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, this guy right here, I'm not afraid to say it on the internet. I love him. All right? I love Let's bring friend. Fluent out. Fluent, man. Let's get it. Let's go. Love this guy, man. What's good, yo? What's good? There we go. What's good, man? Can you guys hear me okay? You yeah. Mm-hmm. You okay. I don't I don't know how to pronounce this. Uh, Lao? Can we get Lao? High, col- high, high cholesterol. Yeah. Um, I, Lao? Can we get Lao out there? Low yeah. down in the house. Low down in the house. What's up, sweet and low? Look, sweet and low. <laughs> One on either side. Sweet and low. I want everybody to know that this is my brother, and he is chatting up here. Just FYI, just, 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 just everybody know. Just let the you want to let the cat out the bag, man. <laughs> let the cat out the bag. This is this is my brother, and he's just up here chatting, man. You nervous? Why are you smiling so hard? Because you're chatting. You're just a no. big chatter, bro. You're a big oh. chatter. Okay, okay. okay. You nervous because he's chatting? Okay. Yeah. Oh wow. All right. Peace out. Let's get him into the big man. Ladies and gentlemen, four one fall. Right. <laughs> it's the main event, man. This low the down, main what event. up, brother? What up, low down? What up, what up, what up, what up, chill? Black in the house. What up, brother? What's up? What's up? Y'all ready? Can we get we the energy ready. up? We are ready. We are ready. We are ready. We, we are ready. I'm gonna be able to match the energy. It's the house. Nah, right. Sweet and low in the building. Low oh, and God. Mars versus Fluent and Chill. We got a tag team match. All right, for the main event of tonight, um, we got three topics on deck. I'll name the topics right now. Topic number one is John Stockton a top five playmaker oh of all time? We're getting to the meat potatoes, man. Topic number two Wilt Chamberlain versus Bill Russell. Who was a better player? Who's greater of all time? Um, topic number three Steph Curry versus Magic Johnson. I think Who's the uh, greatest point guard of all time. I don't think anyone else is in that discussion. But I think the way we'll kick off the first one, uh, we'll go age before beauty. But you know what I gotta say first. Uh, let's get ready to rumble. Chill, fluent. It's on you. Well, I'm I'm confused though because we got age and beauty. <laughs> oh, oh, <God>. damn. <laughs> go, ahead, go, ahead, go ahead, chill. I'll let you go first because you lived in Utah. So I'll st- so I so I'll kick this off when uh, we started this. The first question that I thought is, what exactly is a playmaker? So a playmaker isn't just a guy who distributes the basketball. He does a multitude of things. He scores. He, he not only does he score, he distributes. Not only does he distribute, he plays on both sides of the basketball. He defends also, knocks down open shots. He does all of these things. So we'll start with scoring. John Stockton, when he retired, he retired with, if I'm not mistaken, Oscar Robinson in front of him for points all time. So he scores the basketball. That's number one. Number two, in terms of his distributor, and I don't even need to talk about that. He's the all-time assist leader in NBA history. Now, playing off the basketball, John Stockton is one of the best, and I'm playing defense, John Stockton is one of the best off-ball defenders in NBA history. With him being one of the most, with him being that, that creates steals, that creates up-tempo play. And then, and then when you talk about, when you put all of that stuff together, I ask the question to myself, why isn't John Stockton? And all time, why isn't he a top five playmaker all time? And I can't come up with an answer for that. Love so how does this work? Does Fluent get a minute as well, or is it on me and Low? I think we should cross. I think we should cross. You want to go ahead, go, um, Morris? Uh, yeah, sure, I'll go. Um, I think is I think Cho was right. The question that we should be asking is, what is a playmaker? Um, I think playmaking is being able to create for your teammates. Um whether that be with your ability to score, drawing defenders, or your ability to play, ability to pass and find gaps in defenses. Um, I think 
everyone here would agree John Stockton is a great playmaker, but when we're asking the question of top five, it's about the people who stand out above the rest. I think when we talk about most people who understand Magic Johnson, Steve Nash, whether that be Jason Kidd, LeBron James, even Michael Jordan, a lot of players who can pass, but what they se- where they separate themselves from John Stockton is the pressure they put on defenses with the attention they drew scoring the basketball. That's where John Stockton tends to lag behind. He doesn't really put pressure on defenses in that way because many people, it's well documented that John Stockton wasn't an aggressive scorer, especially in the half court. Coming off pick and rolls, he was, he was tentative when it came to shooting. He didn't really get downhill as much as you'd like, and that's where he doesn't live up to the billing of all these all-time great players. Back to phone and chill. So it's interesting. It's interesting when we say playmaker, these guys all talked about it is giving your team an opportunity to score. Well, John Stockton, more than anybody else in the history of basketball, gave his team an opportunity to score over 15,800 assists. The next closest person is like 3,000 below him. Steals, the next 3,200, the next closest is 600 below him. So he takes the ball on defense, creates an opportunity for his offense. On the offensive side of the ball, it's well documented. We're talking passers. There isn't many, if any, more skilled passers than John Stockton. So good that he made all the difficult passes look easy. On top of that, you say he doesn't score. Well, at his best, he was 17 points and 15 rebounds. So he could score. Keeping in mind, he was in a very, very slow-paced offense, which we'll get to, but I only got three more seconds. Legend. Yeah, when it comes to um, playmaking, I think we all are here, and I think this is where probably the biggest disagreement is going to be. Playmaking, um, as Fluent tried to um, elaborate on, but I think failed miserably, um, is really giving your team the opportunity to score. But what type of advantages are you creating? Um, when someone is standing at the top of the key, handling the ball, and the play is being initiated from everyone else, such as creating advantages with screens, um, creating advantage with uh, post presence, creating advantage in other ways, and Stockton just standing at the top of the key, that is not creating advantages for anyone. That is not something that is considered to be playmaking. That is just somebody who is allowing the team to develop a set, a play, and then he's taking advantage of it because he gets the uh, proper passes, and that's fine and dandy. But in terms of playmaking, creating advantages for your team, creating opportunities for your team. Stockton, great at that, but nowhere near top five status when we talk about other players who not only could pass extremely well, but also were much more prominent scorers and manipulate defense. I'm glad you brought up the logic tone. I'm glad you brought up the logic um, law of manipulating defenses because we're talking about a guy in John Stockton. When you manipulate defenses, you get, you're able to speed the game up. So John Stockton, you left out the fact that he had his coaches changed. So when Frank Layton was the coach, they played in the top five pace in the league. Well, when um, the head coach Jerry showed Sloan. up, when Jerry Sloan shows up after that, they play in one of the five worst paces in the game. So now the game slows down. With the game, with the game being as fast as it was, Stockton both in the regular season and in the playoffs, he was averaging 27 a game and 19 a game. So he was able to score the basketball. Then there's an adjustment period that nobody talks about with Stockton when the game slowed down. But then once he actually got acclimated to what was going on, being able to knock down open shots, putting pressure on defenses. I I believe John Stockton shot over 35, close to 40% in the mid range. At that time, that's a big deal when you're playing in a big man era, where you're getting, when you're getting defenses to sink in, when you're getting defenses to attract you to other guys, now you're able to create for other guys, which is what um, I, I think we're going. The biggest disagreement is clearly on John Stockton's scoring prowess. That's clearly where we seem to be disagreeing. Um, if we want to talk about early on with John Stockton, I think most of his scoring came in transition. That's why he put the most pressure on defenses. He actually looked to score more in transition than pass. He often missed quite a few passes because he was looking to score. That was probably a weakness of his, if you want to get technical. Um, and then in the half court, he was more conservative. He didn't really take as many risks as some of the all-time great playmakers like Magic Johnson. Because sometimes he couldn't see over the defense and other times he wanted to let the play develop. There's many plays where you'll see someone will come off a down screen or hit them, they'll make a three. There's other plays where nothing develops and he ends up creating nothing and they end up falling back on a calm alone isolation with four seconds on the shot clock because John Stockton isn't putting any pressure on defenses. That's what holds him back in these conversations versus guys like LeBron James, who every possession almost, you feel like you're going to get a great shot and he's going to create something for his teammates. John Stockton didn't live up to that standard. And that's the standard we have to hold him to, which is a top five standard.
His his playmaking alone is top five just based on his assists. I'm sorry, is it, top, is it five minutes? Oh, this this is the freestyle minutes? round, by the way. No, oh, this, no, no. this is freestyle round. I, 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 I can go back and forth. Okay. Keep going, so, so so the thing is, his his scoring, you guys knock it and say like he was this horrible scorer when I've already said 15, 17 points a game, a better shooter than the best playmaker ever in Magic Johnson. And when we talk about making it easier for his other teammates, watch his – actually watch him play. You guys love to watch play. All we've talked about is stats. Go watch him play. There's very few players who can off the dribble, one-handed pass, fire it into the post from the top of the key, and hit a guy right in the hands for an easy layup or dunk. Go watch that. He does that time and time and time again. Super makes it so easy for everybody else. How does that make him a better playmaker? Because his teammates now understand, hey, if we just run the lane – John is going to find us. If we just make a cut, John is going to find us. That's the type of things that he did. Like I said, transitioning from his steals, all-time leader, into his assists, all-time leader, and, and the ability to make those hard passes through traffic um, makes him clearly a top-five passer. There's only two guys, assists, that have double-digit assists for their careers. Magic Johnson, John Stockton. He didn't get there by accident, guys. And the fact that he doesn't have a ton of turnovers like the rest of them, should only tell you how accurate he was with those passes. Well, let me explain. No, no one, no one said he was a horrible scorer. The argument that we're making is that his inability to score at the same level and put pressure on the defense is not generating the same quality looks as everyone else. But, so but let's 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 everybody be clear. It's well, it's not because it's not on the same. You think he you think he has the same ability to put pressure on teams from a scoring aspect as LeBron Absolutely James? Absolutely, he does. As, as, as LeBron, I'm not, as LeBron I'm not, James. I'm not gonna say, say LeBron. I'm not gonna put him. Okay, okay, I'm not gonna put him on LeBron James. That's what that's, 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 that's I compare him to Magic. If I compare him to Magic, who I love, if I compare him to Magic, who I love, the difference in their per game scoring is minimal and that's not that's not that's not we can we can understand we can understand that scoring numbers aren't they don't come in the same way playing at a pace of 110 but that's not the question that was asked that was not the question that was asked so yes jockton john stock answer your question and he was a good but then wait wait i want to answer your question though keep going keep going i want to be clear because the question isn't who averaged more points right the question was who has a more predominant effect on the game right. by manipulating, manipulating defense with their scoring mm -hmm. just because i don't score a higher number number of points does not thus mean that my ability to put pressure on the defense with my pressure pressure and um presence on the ball and looking to score right. if i have a presence i don't have to necessarily score for the defense to maneuver and manipulate and right. double me and adjust to my presence on the floor absolutely john right. Stockton, he, did that, he did that with his passing and that's no one no one no one no one yeah i want to be clear to no one saying him. no one said right. he didn't do it his passing but the problem right. is that well, we're talking about scoring that's what we're talking about passing we're talking about scoring, and scoring. We're, we're, we're talking about scoring. With both and i'm glad you brought that up and i'm glad you brought that up nash nash didn't do that either and i'm glad you brought that up low i'm glad you brought that up low because i'm glad you brought that up low because we're talking about in the big man era in a big man era where the offense ran through the big fella a lot of standing around there was a lot of action off the there was a lot of action off the basketball but john stockton was able to knock down mid-range jump shots he was able to knock down long balls which does put pressure on the defense tremendously. That's why Carl Malone was able to get one-on-one -on -one coverage. That's why that's why Jeff Malone was able to get open shots. Why? Because John Stockton was able to put pressure. That wasn't his role as a scorer once the offense changed when they got a new coach in Jerry Sloan because he was a scorer previous to that and he had shown that not only in the regular season but in the playoffs. They they respected his scoring. They, he might have not scored on the level. And again, you're comparing him to LeBron James. I think that's an outlier. But when you compare him to the other four that you're trying to put ahead of him, he was he was scoring. Oscar Robertson also he scoring. had the ability. Like not, to not all points come in the same way. If, yeah. if someone scores, absolutely. But if someone you're trying scores to make a, 16, you're trying to make a playmaker a game debate based on the fact defenses aren't paying you're, attention to. You're him. trying to make a playmaker debate into a scoring debate, and you're completely ignoring the fact that his passing made up for even if he wasn't as great of a scorer as oh, any of those no, guys. His not. passing and playmaking Paul's, ability Paul's makes up for that a no, hundred well, no, because even let's say he's the second best part. Let's just. I don't want to argue about who's the best pass. Let's say the right. second best passer of this group of guys, Magic One, Stockton Two. Right. They all put more pressure on the defense with their scoring pressure that creates passing opportunities that he doesn't do. We have to encompass all of it into the equation. And me personally, and I know would agree, John Stockton's passing doesn't match up to them scoring 
and passing. It doesn't match up to it because he's not, even if he scores 17, 20 points a game, if teams aren't worried about his scoring and defenses aren't bending to his ability to score right. and they're still focusing more on number 32 or right. some of their off-ball players like Jeff Hornacek, he's not putting pressure on defenses to create opportunities for those guys. Well, here's the one, really quickly, guys. Here's the one thing that you left out, Mars. Mars, just so you know, mm -hmm. John Stock. We had a yell, mm -hmm. guys. <laughs> we had a yell. Uh, oh, damn. All right. I would have liked to hear it. Yeah. I would like to hear it as well, buddy. <laughs> yeah, we know allowed. It's against the yeah. rules. Polls will be in the chat. I'm on the back end as well, waiting hey, for yo. the, uh, um, whatchamacallit, the judges' votes. Um, While we're waiting, though, I do want to ask uh, Fluent and Chill, since y'all are defending John Stockton in this regard, who are like y'all top five playmakers that include John Stockton? Uh, James, uh, Jordan, um, Magic, uh, big guys, Chamberlain. I think Chamberlain mm -hmm. is in that conversation as a, as a playmaker. Um, let's see. And that's Jack. James Harden. That's James Harden, right? No, no LeBron James. LeBron no, I'm just playing. Definitely I'm not James Harden. I'm playing, playing. guys. I'm playing. I'm Jesus. <laughs> No, hey man, I'll take James. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna stop. No. I want I wanna stop and acknowledge that Chill's list outside of Magic, all of those players. He, how much value is being provided with your ability to manipulate defense through right. scoring? With, with, with so the, you mean you mean with the you mean with them. the exception of Magic and Stockton? Yeah, but three, on but, list. but three of the five. I just have way a more predominant with their scoring. Ma ability. Magic and Magic and Stockton make up for that with their ability to uh, pass. Okay, so the, if you want to answer us, then I would mm -hmm. just. Those I think those names are great. From what I've mm -hmm. seen, Oscar Robertson should be in that conversation. Oscar, so I was going to say him next, actually. Yeah, and so, and so should Steve Nash. But Stockton just wasn't putting enough pressure on the defense at all. And so, it, so, it, not, so, not, not to a top five level. No. Excuse me, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. Taking Stockton over Nash too. As a player, I love man, people. Do. I, love not, not, I just, not I, I, especially when they think that they were scoring at similar levels and putting the same up. I, I just have a difficult time with Mars trying to sell me the logic that John Stockton sounds like he was the double team man. Like we weren't really concerned about him on the level that we're concerned about other scorers. Like we weren't concerned about him. Like we're concerned about Jason Kidd. We weren't concerned about him. Like we were concerned about Mark Price. We weren't concerned about him. Mark like Price, they we weren't. Jason, we, Jason Kidd is another one who scoring and holds him back. We weren't concerned. Concern, we weren't concerned about him. Like we were concerned about Chris Paul. When in reality, if you look at what he did in terms of him, when you look at what he did in terms of making defenses pay because of his scoring. Now I know that John Stockton didn't average 22 a game, but I mean, damn, man, the dude had over 20, 20 assist games in them 20 or 20 assist games. I've watched those games and he was not doing it. <laughs> I've watched those. You're, games. you're looking through. You, you got. You better change your prescription. He was, oh, wow. not, he was not. He was not. You're watching it, not seeing what a great playmaker he is. No, no, um, he's, he's a great. great I think not, he's a great playmaker. Five. Five. The conversation is not if he's a great or not. It's a top, top five. five. Top five. When I say great, I say top five. All right, man. The results are in. The results are in. Um, according to chat, Mars and Low won fifty six to forty three. Thank goodness, man. Golly, I hate John. And then, and I got judges in the back. Just the low. 10% is just the, the 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 Mars bias. Yes, go ahead. Mm, it's the accent, <laughs> isn't it? It's the accent. That's why we call it sweet and low. Oh, <laughs> nah, that's man. crazy. And I got the judges' votes in the back. Um, I don't know if the fourth, if I'm, I'm still winning on the fourth judge, but judge number one had fluent and chill. Mm. Judge number two had low and Mars. And judge number three also had low and Mars. So unless that fourth judge comes in, as of right now, it's 3-1. Well, All even, right. if, even if he come in, um, yeah, well, they still just, never mind. Yeah, that's focus, me. focus low. Never mind, that's a focus <laughs> low. Get back, get back with us, low. Yeah, come on, brother. This get guy, back man. with us. All right, man. Right. Topic number two. Y'all ready? We good? Yeah. Will Chamberlain, right. Bill Russell, right? Yep. Yes, Topic number two. Will mm -hmm. Chamberlain versus Bill Russell. Um, low and Mars. Y'all go ahead and start. You you start. start. I got it. Um, I think when it comes to Bill Russell, I mean, when I think when it comes to Bill Russell and Will Chamberlain, it's a very interesting conversation, but largely because um, the standard in which we kind of hold a lot of these players to when we have these conversations of their impact on the game. Will Chamberlain statistically was dominant. Will Chamberlain from a skill level offensively was certainly better, especially scoring wise. However, when it comes to the ability to impact the game of basketball, um, your ability to perform at high levels consistently and do what needs to be done, even if it isn't the prettiest way whatsoever, still Bill Russell clears Will Chamberlain in those regards 
pretty pretty confidently, especially when it comes to showing up consistently in a postseason run when they matched up. One's player's production was consistently hampered in contrast to the other one. And I think what's going to probably be brought up in this conversation is that one player was on a significantly better team when the reality is that, A, Will Chamberlain was still on really, really talented teams throughout his career. But even when Will Chamberlain transferred over to the Lakers and was on a really great team, he still lost. And with that being said, and, and with that being said, he still impacted the game tremendously. And we're talking about a guy, like you just mentioned, low statistically, he's unmatched. I mean, Will Chamberlain retired from the game 50 years ago, over 50 years, and we're still talking about him to this day as the best in the game. I mean, that 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 to, that should give you an idea of how awesome he was. But when you're talking about a guy impacting a game significantly, I mean, when he changed his game and changed his game in the aspect of being more of a distributor, that's when it got even better than what they already were. That's when he got even better than what he already was in terms of expanding his teams, in terms of expanding his team's offensive output, in terms of expanding his team's defensive output because he became an even better rebounder. Like you just mentioned, Lowe, the fact that you accumulate a lot of numbers does not mean it's productive because it could be empty. But if you're getting less, but it still could be more. So Chamberlain even being a better rebounder, speeding up the game and making his team better as a rebounder, as a distributor. And they've all and he's always won in convincing fashion, not just convincing fashion, but in dramatic fashion that he's done that. Um, with Bill Russell, there's a lot of misconceptions about him. When it, One is the Hall of Famer argument about his team is just that um, Will Chamberlain, you could argue, had at top end talent even more than a guy like bill russell when you look at him joining the philadelphia 76ers you guys had guys like hal greer chet walker was on that team billy cunningham was on that team he goes to the um lakers he has guys like jerry west elgin baylor two of the top five players of that era um whereas some of the hall of famers bill russell had the people just say oh eight, eight hall of famers half the chat don't know who tom sanders is i'm gonna be honest half the chat know that casey jones is in the hall of fame because of his coaching not because of his play. That's two of Bill Russell's Hall of Famers. So when we use those things without context, it makes it seem like Bill Russell's teams were stacked. The fact of the matter is they won because their defense was all-time great. Not just best in the league, but the best defenses of all time routinely for a decade. That's because of Bill Russell. You can tell because after Bill Russell retired, their defense fell off a cliff. They couldn't win without Bill Russell. In 1958, when he goes down, they lose the finals. In 1960, in 1970, they are below 500. Yeah, Bill Bill Russell's the the the, the forever glue guy. We that's what we talk about, but we can't talk about team accomplishments because we're talking about one on one player versus player. And when you compare Bill Russell to Will Chamberlain, Bill Russell is Rudy Gobert and Will Chamberlain is Nikola Jokic. You got one guy who's dominant in scoring. I mean, double the points per game uh, than Bill Russell had. M more rebounds, better shooting percentage. People forget Bill Russell shot 44% from the field, like atrocious, atrocious shooter. And so what the, is the difference? It's the defense. Well, you know, you mentioned the eight Hall of Famers. He also had Sam Jones and Tom Hinn and uh, Bob Cousy and John Havlicek. He had all these guys who scored more points than he did and played great defense. So what about Bill? What about Will Chamberlain's defense that no one seems to talk about? Who was rebounding more? If they block, if they counted block shots, he would have probably blocked more shots. Let's call it even. Who also, in terms of defensive win share, from sixty-seven to seventy-three, was number one of all players in the NBA, even though he had a reconstructed knee in sixty-nine. We're ignoring his defense. Is this the free for? I no, no, he's mine. I, I agree that I think what Chamber from a defensive standpoint is is grossly underrated. And again, I think from even if we're going to talk about offensively scoring skill wise, yes, also underrated. Uh, passers where I think we we completely disrespect Bill Russell because I think he is a better passer than um, Will Chamberlain, regardless of what the – just from a, a skill passing standpoint, getting his team in the right situation, transition play, which really op opened up what that team was able to do. We just talked about playmaking and talked about what that looks like from a defensive standpoint. We're talking about the the, the premium of playmaking when Bill Russell was able to make a stop, keep the ball in bounds, and then make a quick transition play for a team that offensively just wasn't where it needed to be. And, again, we can talk about numbers left and right, but what did it all translate to again even when he was on teams that were talented not to the same level of winning so yes you can put up more points yes you can put up a better field goal percentage yes you can maybe even rebound more but are you doing the things that are necessary for your team to win and that's what's more simple i'm glad you brought that yeah up. absolutely he's I'm definitely glad. doing oh sorry go ahead go ahead I'm, I'm glad you brought up are you doing the things that's necessary for your team to win well again I, like i mentioned will chamberlain started passing the basketball the year he leads the league in assists the next year he's passing the ball at an elite level they win the nba championship so it's obvious that that translates and that impacts him into winning 
All the other stuff that we're talking about, I mean, we're talking about a guy who the league changed all of their rules to hamper Wilt, only except Wilt still thrived despite all of these rule changes. All of this stuff that went on when, when Wilt was when it was going on, Wilt still thrived. And when you're talking about Wilt getting on that Los Angeles Laker team, when he got on that Los Angeles Laker team with Jerry West, when uh, Elgin Baylor retired, they won the NBA championship. They won the NBA championship off the fact of Chamberlain being a better rebounder, impacting the game, scoring less, impacting the basketball game. When he was doing these things, it impacted the basketball game, and it led to winning. It was when they didn't involve him in the game as much as they should have, Jerry West, then they would have won more. And um, I believe this, the freestyle yeah, this was the freestyle. I, I, I want to say there's a few things. Um, Will Chamberlain, there's a few things that get – said about his career that people don't know about. Alex Hannum is the savior of Will Chamberlain's career. What he did for him on the Warriors and then later in Philly when he joined the um, 76 as the coach, making Will Chamberlain, this is well documented, play more like Russell. That was the game plan for how you Thank could be you. successful with Will Chamberlain. Not, oh, keep doing what you're doing. Well, you're the best player. No, be more like Russell. Rebound the ball. Stop trying to score as much. Be a passing hub for your team at the top of the key. Dribble handoffs. He played more like Russell. That was the game plan. He did that in 66. Bill Russell played that season with a broken foot. That's something many people don't know. He finished that season with a broken foot. You know who the Boston Celtics beat in five games in the playoffs with Will Chamberlain getting all these assists? Will Chamberlain and the Philadelphia 76ers in five games. Bill Russell won a championship as the best player, most impactful player, on a broken foot. But we hear about how Will Chamberlain got hurt in 1969 in Game 7 and he couldn't play and came out the game. But Bill Russell can win a championship on a broken foot and then go after that and win two more. Bro bro after broken he has foot arthritic knees. That's what Bill Russell could do. It's a little bit different. But that being said, I'm glad you brought that up. So what you're saying is Will Chamberlain is coachable, which is another reason why he's better than Bill. And when we're comparing player versus what? player, when we're both, both coachable. player versus player, Wilt, Wilt, Wilt is better. Wilt is better statistically. Wilt is better from from an accolades perspective. Wilt is better from a player perspective because his defense is as good as Bill's. But offensively, he was a better ball handler, a better passer, a better shooter. You better, just lied three times. Had a fadeaway. He had a fadeaway jumper. Bill Russell couldn't do any of those things. So how is he better from an accolades Russell, perspective? Russell, hold on, because I'm going to tell you the only right. thing Bill Russell has over Wilt is rings. If you take away that team thing of rings and add up all the accolades and scoring titles and all this, it all goes to Wilt. So he has more MVPs? It's Bill Russell does. Bill Russell does. Okay, Bill Russell. Who has more All-NBAs? But Mars brought something up. Who has more, more first All-NBAs? Wilt. No, I asked the question. Who has more All-NBAs? Oh, Bill Russell does. Bill Russell does. Bill Russell has more All-NBAs, but Wilt has more first okay. All-NBAs. Yeah, okay. first, okay. All yeah, first but, yeah, but, yeah, but he also played with Bill Russell. Titles. That's, who has that's, more scoring that's titles? Who has more rebounding titles? Scoring, it's yes. Who has more assist titles? I mean, Will Chamberlain, Will Chamberlain. So when Will you're Chamberlain. adding all, that's why I say Yeah, and Will Chamberlain's assist athlete. title, by the way. He didn't lead the, the Will Chamberlain's stats. the only person better to win athletes. the assist title, by the way, chat. Will Chamberlain's the only person who's won an assist title without leading the league in assist average. Which does Crazy back. And it was He's the only person who's won it. He never led the league in assist average. It was also Robinson. Explain how that happened. That doesn't make sense. But but Mars, to your point, when you brought when you brought up uh, this coach actually changing, actually changing Wilt's game and making mm -hmm. it, making Wilt me. I mean, how many players in the NBA have we said that about? Who this coach came comes in and changes this guy's game, and they become less selfish, or they become more of this, and they become a champion. And actually, to play like Bill Russell, though. and they actually oh, save yeah, them. And they, but actually, save them. Well, that, I mean, you can say the same. We can say the same thing about a bunch of great players. Phil Jackson. Phil Jackson basically saved Shaq. Because at that point, what was Shaq doing? Shaq was getting swept out of the playoffs. Okay. Bill Jackson said, this is the way you need to play. You need to play this way. And they, he told oh, him, Luckily, we're and, talking and, about and, Wilt, Wilt and, Chamberlain and, and Bill Russell right now. And I'm, okay. and I'm glad you, brought, and I'm glad you brought that up. I'm glad you brought that up, bro. I'm glad you brought that up, though, because he told him to play like Wilt. Okay, so he told him to play like Bill Russell. And he did, except better. Do everything that you're doing, but, but but add this to your game like Bill Russell does, only except he did it better. And it led to wins because the last time I checked, the only team to beat the Boston Celtics in the 60s was the Philadelphia 76ers. Nobody else beat them in that entire decade. Nobody and else I, did. And listen, and on, a, on a broken foot. Just, and we don't want to – listen, let's not confuse it. This this debate is who's the better player. And the guy with the better stats, the more talented, more skilled, more accolades, more everything, that's the better player. Yes, he was on a team that won more, but when you look at player versus player – it's not even close. But you can see that. why the Celtics won more. It's not just because, oh, they were the best team. It's because of what Bill Russell did. And we, and you said you, there was a few things you lied about. One was the accolades thing. The no. nine ring difference uh, is important. You want me to, you want me to add them up no, for you? No, because we only have 50 seconds. So the nine ring difference is important. Then you said... Um, I said with the exception of rings. 
sure. Right, took the and, rings and then, out. And then you, so that's a then, team thing. Okay, yeah, sure. When we talk about Michael Jordan, it'll be a team thing. Yeah, and then then you also said, um, oh, see, now I forgot what you said because you threw him all over the place. That's crazy. The teammate cut you off. I want to say this. Yeah, when, 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 when talking about what, what, what Chamberlain did with the Lakers, I want to be very mindful. The only time that they won it with the Lakers, even when he was on a better team. So if we're arguing about teams and who it, he won on a really good team, still couldn't win. And the only time he won is when he went up against the Knicks without Willis Reed when he was hurt. So the two times that this man was actually able to win, even when he had competent rosters around him, is when certain players, the best players that he had to match up against on the other team, were hurt. If the end goal is winning, which is Will why both of y'all think Michael Jordan even, is Will Chamberlain so good? Will Chamberlain so good? I don't even believe he's real. Time. <laughs> time. That is a fact, <laughs> Oh, how many arguments I've gotten in with this? Like he don't think. Will I've heard. I've heard many. Mars, I've Mars heard. did a whole. Mars did a whole two minute TikTok <laughs> talking about how Wilt couldn't have scored hundred points. It's unbelievable. That proves he's the best player. If you don't believe what he did was real. No, but Carmelo. Yeah, then Carmelo Anthony like, yeah. came out and said he saw the film. So Carmelo. I mean, I, was, I wouldn't believe yeah. somebody won nine championships like Bill Russell did though either. We, Chad, we have Paul actual fit photo, photo of it. But, but, but again, Dude, but, Dude, but, Dude but, took the the East Ulster team to the finals, of course. Anybody's doing that today. Oh, yeah. Okay. He's a glue guy. That's cool. Oh, I just, glue guy. That's one hell of a glue guy. That's one hell of a glue guy. Bruce Brown. Yeah. Yeah. Really the same person for real, really. Yeah. Oh, I can't really go bear. Who guys? Also, they, they, they missed the play. They missed the playoffs. Who, who the you picking? Rudy Gobert or Nikola Jokic? Who you picking? That's oh it. wow. That's no, Mars. Who y'all picking? That's the comparison. Hey, uh, well, as a European Gobert man, I'm happy with both of them. Bill Russell, so that's not actually the comparison. Yeah, and the other lie you said was that they were equal on defense, but no, I said they're close. I said they're close on defense. You said equal, but. Is it you ridiculous, Moss? Is, yes. is, 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 yes. is it ridiculous yes. considering? I put it this way. If the defense is this. this. Hold on. But the defense is this, and the offense is this. I'm thinking the guy that's... And the impact and the impact is this. And the that's impact, the impact is, is... Even if the defensive gap is that small, which is not, the impact would, in that tiny gap is larger seen. than that gap of offense. Put Bill Russell... Put the thing that, the put thing Bill, that Russell, put Bill the, Russell on, on Wilt's team, they ain't winning. The thing that you leave out... That's a that's a. You don't think Bill Russell will win with Jerry West and Elgin Baylor and Gail Goodrich? And I think that's that, a lie. At that's that time in their career, and, and I think well, those was I meant no, I meant the, I meant the Warriors. Sure. With the Warriors oh, I, I was about to say, yeah, that's yeah, what I'm I'm sure. I was about to say. Lakers, Lakers, Lakers. I was about to say, Floyd, you don't even believe that. You don't even believe that, Floyd. We'll talk about my Lakers. Yeah, you don't believe that. But I'm, but like that's what I'm saying. If he gets drafted where he should have been to the Hawks, you never hear about Bill Russell. All right, man. Polls are in. That's crazy. Polls are in. Um, still waiting for Ron. Okay, never mind. I got him. Um, according to chat. According to the poll, Low and Mars won fifty seven percent to forty two. Oh god. Up to well, in terms of ten percent accent tax. Um yep. and then in terms of the judges, judge got? number one got Mars and Low as well. Judge number two got fluent and chill. Okay. Judge number three got fluent and chill. Oh wow, two and two. Judge number four. Got fluent in chat. There you go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> chat bias. Lo when, low he, when, he, when these judges get revealed, there better not be no old head judge that harps on winning right, when making he? these arguments. Harps on winning? That would be the one that voted for you. I know. I say the other ones, I better not hear not one single one tell me that I, and I know for a fact, if any of them actually believe that MJ. You got Oxen's vote. That's what you got. Vote. Low, low and Mars, if you, if you if we were doing a draft today and you had to pick between Bill and Will, first pick. Who would Be you honest with? now that it's over. What in today's game? Yeah. It, it, it really doesn't well, matter. Just in, general, just in general? Just in general. Yeah. I'm being honest with you. I'm actually gonna pick, picking Bill, bro. I'll take Bill Russell. Just lying. We didn't oh, even wow. get to how horrible of a teammate Will Chapman was either. They also redacted, retracted from what they were trying to do. So you don't know horrible. anything about the rest of your team. You would still pick yeah. Will. No, before, up until like his... Now for playing 2K. He was, he was no, horrible. No. You're he starting a franchise. Yes, definitely and will. you're starting a franchise with their skill and talent. You're picking Bill Russell over Will. And, you, and see, draft you, see start a team. you see how you're taking away everything else oh, that well, that's comes how you're drafting. There's, there's some, no, I'm, I'm not drafting solely off of skill and talent. you're drafting. 
not off of skill, not solely off of skill and talent. There's other factors that come into. What do you skill. draft off of? The intangible, intangibles, as you like oh, to all you guys say doesn't matter. No, the, the, yeah, the ones, the ones, do whole no, no, videos did. about how that stuff. Th I remember you saying he got that dog in him, and you're laughing about that not no, being a real geez. thing, and no. now you're trying to use that. Well, I never wow. said dog. I never said dog. Well, intangible, well, well, intangible are more than having that dog. <laughs> And, all, and also, when one person has negative intangibles, where there's multiple stories about how you negative terrible, intangibles, mm -hmm. yeah, negative being a being a terrible teammate, being selfish, those are all things that were actually said about. You don't think you, don't think you can run the streets about uh, with Will? Hello, focus. No, this is what you got to deal with on a regular. With you know? <laughs> <laughs> Literally <laughs> just yesterday at on fit, on well Thanksgiving, okay. yes, yes. So this what you. I, I see where I see what it is. I, I yeah, exactly. See it. I, I all right, know. man. Last topic, the finale to the finale. <laughs> topic number three, Steph Curry versus Magic Johnson. Oh, be interesting. Fluent and chill. Go ahead and start it off. I went, I went first the first time. So. You know, it's it's. I, I love Steph Curry. I'm going to start by praising him because I have, in all my years of watching basketball, all 75 years of them, um, I've never <laughs> seen a greater shooter than Steph Curry. Um, however, that alone doesn't make you a better player. Um, yes, he changed the game to a certain extent. Yet, like I said, I'm not even going to argue he's the greatest shooter of all time. But when we look at the entirety of the game, which includes defense and rebounding and passing and playmaking and, you know, the, the up scoring from other parts of like posting up, et cetera, leadership, it, it's magic in all of those categories with the exception of shooting and just shooting threes let's be clear because inside the two it's still magic he could post up he had a baby hook from the free throw line it's like 90 to 88 percent, so it's close it's really just three-point shooting which he does phenomenally better than anybody else but if i need a rebound if i need a pass if i need a steal if i need some a little bit of defense just from his size alone it's magic who's not going to get picked on as much as free throw. Hmm. go ahead go mars um I'm gonna ignore the shooting for shooting. I'm gonna ignore that one. I'm just gonna let that one slide. The chat knows that's stupid. So um with Steph Curry, I think let's start with Magic Johnson's defense because um the the idea of Magic Johnson's defense that it was a positive vastly overblown. I think it was good to start his career when um they used him as like a free safety roamer. Um the Lakers used to trap a lot with Norm Nixon, Jamal Wills, Michael Cooper, and he could play free safety, pick up some stills there. But as he got older and his speed declined and he was guarding wings and stretch fours because he couldn't stay in front of guards, he was a negative on defense. I don't think there was really an argument for it. The, the positive he brought on defense was his rebounding because he was playing closer to the rim but didn't provide rim protection. So teams were exploiting his defense. Just the same way they exploit Steph Curry's defense in isolation or switches, they exploited Magic Johnson's defense. The defense is not moving the needle for either one of them. So then you've got to have the conversation about offense. And I only have 10 seconds. So when Lowe gets to it, I'm sure he's going to talk about offense and the advantage creation and the shooting and the ability to stretch defense to 40 feet, all how important that is. I just have to tell you guys about Magic Johnson. When, this is the first conversation that I've ever had when talking about point guard, when I hear, when I hear terms like off-ball gravity. I've never heard that before when you're talking about a point guard. When you talk about a point guard, my job as the lead guard, I am the primary ball handler. I am the maestro. I am the guy who is the table setter. My offense comes second. I involve you. I involve you. I involve you. Then I get involved, and I do not play off the basketball as the lead guard. That's what Magic Johnson was. He involved everybody else, which made his team so much better because it made his team so much better because of the threat that he was. Add all that up to the fact that he revolutionized the position because before him, the lead guard was not six foot nine. Now we got a six foot nine guy who creates so much more havoc. We got a six foot nine guy who can throw passes that nobody has ever seen. We got a six foot nine guy who can actually shoot the basketball as his career went on in the mid range, who can actually shoot the long ball, even though the long ball wasn't that big in the game. He could shoot the long ball to keep defense respected. Okay. Um, again, the shooting argument, is I don't we should stop wasting time with shooting. And I agree. The defensive argument is basically null and void. So offensively, the value that Curry is providing is, in my opinion, just greater than Magic. Magic's still an amazing offensive player. And let's not get that wrong. But when you're talking about somebody, and, and as Chill just uh, highlighted how the responsibility of a point guard is that it, no, no, the responsibility of point guard, like every other position, is to win basketball games. That's the responsibility. And based off of your team, mm -hmm. what your team does from a, a player to player perspective, you should be able to compliment them as well as you can. The same way we ask every other position, mm -hmm. this idea that it has to look a certain way is crazy. So when you come from Curry, if he is a great scorer, great shooter, 
on and off ball, which allows Draymond Green as a player to look better than what he actually is because he can handle the offense. The ability to move off ball that allowed everyone else, that value that stretches the floor out to light and links we've never seen is extremely valuable. I'm, I'm glad that you I'm glad that you brought up winning because the <laughs> Lakers weren't winning until Magic got there. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar didn't win a chip for like 10 years until Magic got there. And the second he got there, they started winning. Curry got there and well, he needed a few years. He needed some pieces. He needed Draymond to bring up the ball. He needed Clay to shoot, do what Clay does. He needed um, what's his face? Uh Iguodala to play defense. Like he needed all those things for that team to become great. Magic came to a team and made them great. That's not my argument. That's yours about the winning. When you say the shooting, well, like I said, inside, like in the key, if he could post up, he could shoot. He was a good shooter. Not, not great. He came into the lead, was a bad shooter, and he got better and better as the years progressed. But again, we're completely ignoring all the other facets of the game, and I don't want us to get tied up into scoring and shooting because rebounding, assists, passing, all those things that Magic does better count for something. So he won, he passed, he rebounded, he was a leader. He literally, everything was shooting better. Um, Steph Curry's scoring um, is his playmaking. We just had a conversation about playmaking, how scoring, causing defenses to adjust to you, creates opportunities for other people. Steph Curry, as Cho said, off-ball gravity is what creates for other people. Does he need to have the ball and dribble at the top of the key or run a pick and roll or see a gap in the defense for him to exploit it? No, because if he comes off a down screen and two people go with him, there's someone wide open for a layup. Steph Curry is creating these opportunities with and without the basketball. When they trap Steph Curry off a pick and roll and there's two people with him and Draymond Green is in the short roll, he's created a four on three. He is someone who is creating advantages every time he's on the floor from the half court to the baseline. Everywhere he goes, he is bringing defenders with him, creating opportunities for that Golden State offense every single time down the floor. That's why with Steph Curry, they've been one of the best regular season and postseason offenses of all time. That's why in the regular season, Steph Curry is is statistically the most impactful regular season player of all time. And that's why it translates to the postseason as well as it does. That's why Golden State's offense is so hard to slow down. Absolutely. And because of the action off the basketball with everybody else, in addition to Steph Curry, and you brought up a really interesting point, Mars, not Mars, I'm sorry, Low, when you said your job is to win basketball games. Well, everybody's job isn't the same. My job is the primary basketball. My, my, my primary job, my job as the primary basketball handler is not the same as Horace Grant's job as the rebounder and the defender. No, my job is a little bit different because I got to set the table. I got to make sure that I take care of the basketball. I got to put us in a position to score. Your job is to get me the basketball so I can get you in position to score. When I think about Magic Johnson and how he did that for the offense in terms of speeding up that offense, even when they got in the half court, when he's dumping the ball down in the Jabal, when he's getting guys like James Worthy involved in the game and they're coming off of them, they're doubling and he's playing two man with guys like James Worthy. When he's doubling, when he's playing two man with guys like Jabal, where he the defense has to respect him shooting the basketball, I think that's huge in terms of off ball gravity. But as a as a legit point guard, we're talking about something completely different where Magic revolutionized the game. Oh, and what I'm yeah, saying you got a guy, is you got a guy who doubles an assist and takes 13 field goal attempts to 18 and was able to impact the offense that much is is insane. Yeah, he I had want, the ball want, in he had the ball in his hands. Yeah, so you're, gonna say, get, you're gonna put on that's more right. Numbers. Why did he have a ball? And, and there's, yeah, there's a reason he had the ball in his hands a lot because when he had a coach like Paul Westside who tried to get him off the ball more, he got him fired because he said, I'm going to ask out of this team if you don't let me play with the ball in my hands. Because he knows he wouldn't be as effective. And he knows he wouldn't be as effective without the ball. Whereas we know Steph Curry with the ball. Without the ball, he's bringing just as much impact because we've seen Steph Curry as a primary ball handler. This idea that when Steve Kerr came in, he just put Steph Curry off the ball is not true. That's Draymond not Green not. did not become this point forward until 2016. Right. 2015, Steph Curry was handling the ball because David Lee was still in the starting lineup. He was doing those things, and the Warriors were still the best offense in the NBA. Steph right. Curry can play that traditional point guard role, handling the ball because he's still creating those not as good as magic. Not as good as magic. When the offense is the best in the NBA, when the offense is the best in the NBA, when the offense is the best in the NBA, I'm pretty sure that going to be damn fine especially when off the ball he's so so you agree he he so, so he doesn't need to have the ball in his hands and be as good as that's what you just said he brings twice no, as much value no, without that's what you just said he can't play as good no, as you're just saying you're saying you're saying yes he point guard, you're saying the point the point guard role okay mm -hmm. then you're again you're identifying these things again once more it's about complimenting your teammates so yes chill you're right if you have a teammate or a team that is constructed around you where there isn't another ball handler or there aren't as as another um passer 
then sure. Then that then of course that makes sense. If you are on a team with a Horace Grant who needs somebody to set him up or XYZ, then fine. No one's denying that. But if you're on a team with a Draymond Green and the best maximize him is to go off ball a bit more to maximize his value, that should not be shunned of Steph Curry because he found another way to maximize his teammates. Because that's the whole point is Absolutely. to maximize right. his teammate. Right. So Curry maximizes teammates by coming off ball. Is he greatest off ball player in the same aspect? Offensively, way he revolutionized the game of basketball at a tremendous value. Fluent talked about pieces. Revolutionized the game of basketball. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Please, please, let's let's stop talking about the pieces that were done because when those pieces were not there, no, Magic could not win. If those pieces were not there, they were not. No, when Pat Riley was, you're you're talking, you're talking hypothetically. Magic got no, 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 no. no. I'm I'm talking about in '91 when they didn't win. Right. See, when they got deeper into their careers, Curry right. still provided did, okay, the evidence. Why Curry, are you forgetting Curry, that his second Curry, best Curry, player got hurt Curry, when they didn't win, mm, and his third best player was yeah, hurt? They, didn't they, play were, that they were all they That's were already they on pace. Win. They were That's, already on pace. They were already on pace. They were all healthy. They were they were all they were all that were they were all on pace. That's great. That's great. Don't try to use that as an excuse. They were already on pace to lose by the time James Worthy was gone. They were already on pace to lose. So that was done. When Kevin Durant left, when I was older, when Clay Thompson, when Clay when Clay Thompson wasn't the same player, they. He wants wasn't either. the same because he got hurt in the round before. Uh, and all, so all these players weren't the same. And yet, when it came down to being the ball dominant player that y'all expect, y'all won out of him, right? Do, when he was, when when he, play and, but the problem that I'm play. having, low with your logic is that what? the fact that he didn't come into the game, like you just said, you just said he came into the game where he changed his game, where he played off ball. Well, he played off ball in college, so it's not that big of a difference. So him playing on ball in college ball when Mark Jackson no, was coaching, which, 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 which means that him playing, playing which, which means that him playing, and, playing and, all, which, which means that him playing league. on the basketball, which means that horribly, which means that him playing on the basketball low, which means that him True playing on the basketball that was a just that was an adjustment, and he wasn't nearly as effective as playing off the basketball, which is where he was natural at. Because he played off the basketball in college, in he was awesome. When he, came, he was on ball and he, he got to the finals. In 2015, he was on ball and was one of the three best players in the world Warriors? and won a championship. On and, the in 2015, right. he was on I'm ball. You, and, and and the year that he had the most successful season, which was the 15-16 season, he played where Mars? I'm all ears. Off the ball. Off the basketball, correct. Now, with him to playing off maximize the basketball, his teammates, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Which is yeah. what, he, yeah. which is what yeah. he did when he walked in the oh, door. That's what he was. Just sat there and said, Byron Scott. The argument being made is that Steph Curry Curry's is so healthy, versatile okay. that it's a detriment to him. Man, that's basically what they're saying. Man. Curry's Curry's I just listened to five minutes of Steph Curry's versatility is a detriment. That's why I just yes, that's what they're saying. No, it's not a detriment. He's great. He's just no, no, you're not doing that because your logic is is versatility. Get the vote, man. Tell your muted man. We're not allowed. Well, Chill is going crazy, but yeah. Oh wow. Okay. I do think he's good for four <laughs> as well, but I just can't hear him. I do think he's good. For All right, chat. Hey, uh, po pull is up. I can't un unmute yourself. Chill. They weren't. They weren't allowing us to debate. I'm anymore, sorry. To skew the They let those two talk. Mm, biased. They muted me too. I guess they muted me off for like two water. seconds. Blood Put the is the water, I guess. I think that I think the young guys, even though that's the thing y'all get wrong, but anyway, the young guys so, are in yeah. the chat today, so I think I know how this is gonna sway. Be so I mean, what do you feel? I think um, you're chat. that last debate, okay. yeah, better all around is magic though, but I'm a staff guy, so, so I'm one of the youngins. Okay, not, not can better all around is magic, but he, I'm gonna pick play. the guy that I've seen. He's he's he, can, he can play both on and, and off ball. ball. That's not a, that's not a negative. Being able to play on and off ball. And do it highly effectively. It should not I think be you forget that. when Magic came into the Lakers, there was basically two point guards, him, him and Norm Nixon. Whoever got the ball took off. So mm -hmm. he was playing off the ball a little bit too when they won a that. A little bit. Year. A little bit. We, I said we, a little we bit. Both, we, all, bit. we both know that. Yeah, but can I ask you this? Ball, no, 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 no. Let me, no, no, no. Let me ask you this. Because y'all y'all brought up intangibles in the last conversation about Bill and Wilt. Why didn't you bring up intangibles in this conversation with uh, Magic and Steph? I think, I think Steph is amazing intangibles. Whoa. I, <laughs> we, we can bring it up. We can bring up intangibles. I think first of all, I think having the having the self awareness to move off ball and thriving in that is an intangible. Sacrificing your own statistical the self awareness. Ability. You think Yo, he decided to make he he you think he went to coach and said taking me off ball? If, well, you if you, you tell me. I'm just you, asking you. I'm asking you. I think no, I think that was a part of it as well. I think I think even even if, even if he didn't, if the coach came to him and said, "Hey, I need you to come off ball," having the ability to accept uh -huh. that role 
and in maximizing that to allow everybody else to flourish, that is an intangible. I think that is a great that because I don't think there's that many players that would have been told we need you to make adjustments to your game to help maximize your team. I think that's a great intangible to have. Intang yeah. Intangibles are things that can't be measured. Us talking about Steph Curry's off ball game and how that creates for other people is an intangible thing because it's not measured by stats. That's an intangible. That's intangible doesn't just come down to killer will. Even, and even, even if that's true, that's not what that's a point guard does. That, that's not one of the things that. Well, the question isn't who's a better point guard, it's who's a better player. That's the question. Yeah, who's, better all round, who's a better all-round player? Is that the intangible that you... Is that the, that's the only intangible y'all had, too. Every other part of the game. Off-ball No, I'm just saying we, that is an intangible thing. It's an amazing leader. It's an I think, but I think both of them have great intangibles, though. The other yeah. reason why I was harping on intangibles about the other argument is because there's a clear discrepancy. Who's better, who's better with the intangibles, though? Just put a bullet on a name. Imagine. It's hard there because you can't measure these things. But one... Man, when, when there's, when there's one... There's easy, one when there's one player who has legit negative intangibles, like what Chamberlain, in contrast to extremely you just could positive not intangibles. Put a name on put it, this, put it this way. When you know the majority of people in this world, like 75 plus percent, will tell you the greatest point guard of all time is Magic, and Curry is too. That tells you who the better player is. That's it. All right, man. Polls are in. <laughs> Polls are in. I know many times where the majority has been wrong. Yeah, but it's been plenty of times the majority has been wrong. The finale, man. The winner, of the, winner of the final <laughs> battle, man. Listen, um, according to the chat, Mars and Low won 60 to 40%. Wow. Shout out to the chat, man. The chat knows, yeah. man. They're real ball numbers in the chat, chat, knows, man. The, chat the chat's a bunch of dummies who vote for Mars. Get out of here. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> they couldn't dribble, what do you mean? They couldn't, they, couldn't couldn't dribble, they couldn't dribble saliva down their cheek. Get out of here. Oh, wow. oh, damn. oh my oh, God. Damn. Oh. Judge, according yeah, to the was... judges, judge number one, <laughs> extremely close. But Mars and Low. It's according to judge number one. Judge number two. Fluent Whatever and chill. Landslide. Curry. Get out of here. Fluent and chill. Landslide. Interesting. Fluent and chill. Landslide. Landslide. There you go. Judge number three. Mars and Low. Oh, that's it. We won. Judge You're number four. Basketball? Hold on. Someone fluent said they're going to basketball. You guys wait. We you won guys three, wait. On Monday? On Monday? We won. Yeah, we won. Gonna watch the panel on Monday. You'll see how much. Hey, judge two. Judge two. Let Go me ahead, know how it was a yeah, we didn't. We didn't. We didn't know what with the. Yeah, yeah. 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 ties from backstage, and then the the sixty forty in chat. Chat, can you put a one in the chat if you started watching basketball when Derrick Rose got drafted? One hundred percent. 